cameras in the classroom. Adventure or adversity? A multimedia project submitted for ETC 515 by Paul Stoll. Why should we use cameras in the classroom? Is this what you see in your classroom? Bored faces? Students not wanting to come to class? What if your classroom could look like this, with students actively involved in learning? There's a growing body of research by educators who use photography in the classroom. Some of them use them for participatory photography, active learning, production pedagogy, and social learning. Cameras in the classroom help kids be creative and tell their own story. The general flow is pretty simple. There's only a couple of steps. First, the students take photographs. These photographs are gathered in the classroom so the students can learn from each other about their work. In some cases, the project is a competition where the best photographs are judged by a panel of experts or peers and awards are given out. What sort of things can be photographed? Maybe items about social justice. Local knowledge. What's in the students' neighborhoods or their homes? Comparing that to global photographs increases the students' global cultural awareness. Maybe they can photograph topics in science. Things like tiny things. Things that change over time or change in an instant. No matter what the topic, having the students look through the lens of a camera gives them another way to talk about their world. Let's take a closer look at the flow. First, you'll need to introduce the project. For some students, they've never touched a camera or used it to document their world. So you'll need to explain what the project will be like, what the expected outcome is, and all the different steps along the way. Then you'll need to select devices. Do the students have smartphones? Access to digital cameras? Do you need to supply devices yourself? When every student has a device, then you need to teach them how to use it. Very often there are many controls on a smartphone app or on a digital camera. Take time in your project to teach them how to use the equipment. You'll also need to teach some about photography. Photography is an art and can be learned. Spending some time helping students understand the best way to communicate through photography will increase their enjoyment and their effectiveness. And then allow the photos to happen, oftentimes by giving them specific assignments. Things like photograph something that's not in the right place, photograph something that is beautiful, photograph something that needs to be improved. Giving them specific ideas of what to photograph will help them get started. Then you need a way to gather the photos together. Some instructors use social media, things like Facebook or Tumblr or Flickr. Others set up their own wiki pages if they're going to be electronic. Still others have photos printed out and then display them in the classroom. However you go about it, make sure that everyone has a voice and everyone can see the work. And finally, the most important step is to gather together and reflect. Here are some tips from the people who have written research articles about using photography in their classroom. Don't skip those first steps about teach them how to take photos and how to use their devices. Spending some extra time helping them understand how to do that will make their photos more enjoyable for them and more effective for everyone else. Start small and then expand. Maybe your first assignment are photos in the class. Then the next one might be in the schoolyard. And finally, in the neighborhood. Beware of the digital divide. If some of your students can afford photo editing software at home and digital cameras, and others don't have either of those, then there'll be an unequal balance in your project. So be sure that everyone has about the same access to equipment and to editing software, if you choose to do that, for every student in the class. Going digital makes creativity easy. If students can take many photos of the same item, 
changing the settings on their app or their device, and moving around it without worrying about running out of film, they can concentrate on the creativity instead of the resources. And most importantly, be sensitive when sharing. Photos are like a new language, and while you wouldn't allow bullying in your classroom, you do need to consider setting some guidelines in your class for how to share and constructively critique each other's work. In order to encourage participation, some educators turn their projects into contests. These contests can be in your class or even across classes, maybe across districts or schools, even across the world. Let's look at some examples. Cheryl McLean and Jennifer Roswell created a competition about sustainability. They worked with students, staff, and eventually the communities of several universities and created a competition about sustainability photography. What a great way to get people interested in science. You can use photography to help people say things about their local area. These educators used a technique called photo voice to have their students document their homes and neighborhoods. Elizabeth Lilly and Charla Fields wanted to see how creative their kids could get. So they also used the photo voice technique with their fourth graders to tell stories about their home. Dal Siegel also concentrated on creativity. He wanted to increase the visual communication skills of his students, which were gifted students, fourth graders, all the way up to university honor students. These students used digital cameras and smartphones to create their work. Catherine Hyde used photography to help her students understand about sociology. She told her graduate students that they needed to create a self-portrait. After thinking about what statement to make, each student was tasked with creating a photo that said who they were. This project helped the students understand that photos can be social data and that they can look at the entire photo to catch the whole story. These researchers taught physics through photography to their students. Instead of a lecture, followed by exercises at the back of the book, followed by a test, for their high school students they created a competition where teams of students got together to create a photo that exemplified a physics principle and then put that together with words and equations and data in order to convey different physics principles. So what do you see when you look through the camera at your classroom? Do you see adversity or adventure? We hope that like the people in our examples, you find adventure. Music